In this lesson, we'll be learning how to calculate the whole. Example 1. If one third of a number is 96, calculate the whole. This question is telling us that one third of a number is 96. Therefore, one third of a number is equal to 96. So to calculate the whole, we find the reciprocal of the fraction or the inverse of the fraction or we flip the fraction and multiply by 96. When we are multiplying fractions, we always look for opportunities to reduce before we multiply. Here, we don't have anything to reduce, so we simply multiply 3 by 96 and we'll get the whole number to be 288. Now, I could have done the same question by using a fractional model. The question told me that one third of a number is 96. One third means one out of three parts. So if one third of this number is 96, then another third would also be 96. Another third would also be 96. So if I add 96 plus 96 plus 96 or multiply 96 by 3, I will get the same answer. Example number 2. If one quarter of a number is 20, calculate the whole. This question is telling us that one quarter of a number is 20. Therefore, one quarter of the number is equal to 20. So to calculate the whole, we flip the fraction and multiply by 20. We have nothing to reduce, so we multiply 4 times 20. The whole is going to be 80. Now, I could have worked out the same question using a fractional model. It tells me if one quarter of a number is 20, one out of four parts. One quarter of a number is 20. Then another quarter of this number it will also be 20. This quarter will be 20. This quarter will be 20. So to calculate the whole number, we can simply multiply 20 by 4 and we will get the whole, which is 80. Example number 3. This is a two-step question. The question says that three-fifths of Mary's money is 27. How much is half of her money? Step 1. We need to calculate the whole. The question told us that only three-fifths of her money is 27. So how much is all of her money? So we have to calculate the whole. So therefore, three-fifths of her money is 27, which means three-fifths of her money is equal to 27. So to calculate the whole, we find the reciprocal of the fraction, or we flip the fraction, and we multiply by 27. Again, when we are multiplying, we always look for opportunities to reduce before we multiply. 3 into 3 is 1, and 3 into 27 is 9. So our next step is to multiply 5 and 9, and we'll get $45. Now, what does $45 represent? $45 represents all of her money, five-fifths of her money, all of her money, not three-fifths, okay? So now that we know all of her money, I would like to explain the same question using a fractional model. The question told us that three-fifths, three-fifths means three out of five parts. Okay, so this is 1 out of 5, 1 out of 5, 1 out of 5, 1 out of 5, 1 out of 5. Five parts. The question told us that 3 fifths of her money is 27. So if 3 fifths of her money is $27, then how can you determine how much is 1 fifth of her money? All we have to do is divide by 3. So if I divide 27 by 3, one-fifth of her money will be 9. So each part represents $9. And if I multiply 9 by 5, I would get the whole to be $45 as well. Okay. Step 2 of this question wants us to calculate half of her money. I am going to write that. Half of what is her money? $45. So I'm going to write half of 45. And we are going to calculate that. This of here means to multiply. So again, we look for opportunities to reduce. If you don't reduce at first, you can reduce after. 
okay? So if we have 45 over 2, for those of you all who can do short division, you all can do long division. How much times could 2 go into 45? 2 into 4 is 2. 2 2s two are 4. We subtract. We bring down our 5. 2 into 5 is 2. 2 2s two are 4. So we are getting 22, the remainder becomes the numerator, and the denominator is going to be 2. So here we are getting 22 and a half. We are dealing with money, so the answer is going to be half of her money will be $22. What is a half of a dollar? 50 cents. Example number four. The question reads, if three quarter of Sam's mangoes are 420, how much is two-fifths of his mango? This is a two-step question. The question is telling us that three-quarter of his mangoes are 420. That's just three-quarter. How much is all of his mango? So step one would be to calculate the whole. This question is telling us that three-quarter of his mangoes is 420. This question is telling us that three-quarter of his mangoes are 420. So therefore, three-quarter of his mangoes are equal to 420. So to calculate the whole, we find the reciprocal of the fraction and multiply by 420. Again, when we are multiplying fractions, we always look for opportunities to reduce. Could a three go into 420? Yes. The divisibility rule by 3 says once the sum of these digits that we want to divide 3 by could 3 go into 420? Yes, 3 into 4 is 1 with a remainder of 1, 3 into 12 is 4, and 3 into 0 is 0. 4 by... 4 by 140 is going to give us 560. So this tells us that all of his mangoes are 560. Again, I can work the same question out using a fractional model. They told me that 3 quarter of his mangoes are 420. So if 3 quarters are 420, I can divide 420 by 3 to determine how much is 1 quarter. We know 3 can go into 420, 140 times. So 140 for each quarter. And if I multiply 140 by 4, I would know how much is all of his mangoes. Step 2 of this question asks, how much is two-fifths of his mangoes? So we have to find out how much is two-fifths of his mangoes. How much mangoes does he have? 560. So we have to find two-fifths of 560. So we're going to write two-fifths multiply by 560, and we are going to get 224 mangoes. Now, again, when we are multiplying, we always look for opportunities to reduce. So 5 can go into 5, 1. 5 into 5 is 1. 5 into 6 is 1 with a remainder of 1. And 5 into 10 is 2. Okay? And 112 multiply by 2. 2 twos are 4. 2 ones are 2. 2 ones are 2 is going to give me 224 mangoes. Example number 5. Shiloh spent one quarter of his money on snacks. He remained with $24. How much money he had at first? The first thing we need to know is how much money he had in all. Now, we are going to read over this question. And we're going to highlight the information that was given. The question tells us that he spent one quarter of his money on snacks. So the fraction of money Shiloh spent is equal to one quarter. So if he spent one quarter of his money on snacks, what fraction did he remain with? Now let's look at the fractional money. Imagine Shiloh spent one quarter of his money on snacks. 
what fraction of money does he remain with? What fraction of money he remains with? He still has how many quarters? Three quarters. Now we can work out this without using the fractional model. To determine the fraction that Shiloh has left, we can simply subtract from the whole. The whole here is four. He spent a quarter, one out of four parts. Okay, so we can subtract from the whole, subtract what he spent, one quarter, from four over four. We can subtract this fraction because we have common denominators. So all we have to do is subtract my numerators. Four subtract one is going to give me three. So again, we can see here that the fraction he has left is three quarter. Now, why is it important to determine the fraction he have left? Because they told us that he remained with $24. So I need to find the fraction he has left so that I can equal it to the money he has left to determine how much money he had originally. Okay, so the amount of money he has left is $24. So we have to calculate the original amount of money he has. And to do that, we are going to equal the fraction he has left and to the money he has left. Okay, so to determine the money he has left, we simply find the reciprocal of the fraction. It's going to be 4 over 3 multiplied by 24 over 1. And again, we look for opportunities to reduce 3 into 3 is 1. 3 into 24 is 8. And 4 times 8 will give us 32. What does 32 represent? 32 represents the amount of money he had at first. Let's look at another example. This is the last example for this tutorial. Sinai gave his friend three-fifths of his marbles and had 46 left. How much marbles did he have originally? Now, they gave us the information that we can use to determine the amount of marbles he had originally. Now, let us highlight the information that they gave us. What fraction of marble Sinai gave his friend? He gave his friend three-fifths. Now, if he gave his friend three-fifths, what fraction of marbles would he remain with? Some people could say, well, miss, if he gave three out of five, then he's going to remain with two out of five. Some of us may not be able to see that all at once. Now, let's look at our fractional model to help us. He gave three-fifths. Now, if he gave three-fifths of his marbles the fractions he remain with is two-fifths okay now we can work this out without using the fractional model the whole is five over five what fraction does he have left we can simply subtract three-fifths from five over five and we would see the answer we are getting is two-fifths now we know the fraction he has left now how much marbles what are the number of marbles he has left? The number of marbles he has left is 46. Now we know the fraction he has left and the marbles he has left. We can use that information to calculate the original amount of marbles Sinai had at the start. So he re the fraction left is 2 fifths and the number of marbles left is 46. So we can find the reciprocal of this fraction, which is 5 over 2, multiplied by 46 to determine the original number of marbles Sinai has. Now, again, when we are multiplying fractions, we always look for opportunities to reduce before we multiply. 2 into 2, 1, and 2 into 4 is 2, and 2 into 6 is 3. So 2 into 46 is 23. Now I multiply 5 by 23, and I am going to get 115 marbles. So this 115 represents the marbles Sinai had originally before he gave his friend three-fifths. Be sure to like, share and subscribe to my channel for more tutorials like this.